So I think I may have come up with a formula on how to live a good life, but if I'm wrong, (laughs) I'm sure you guys will tell me. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Molesky. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Molesky. This is my YouTube channel. I I have 492 subscribers. Oh my god, that's so close to 500. If you like this video, please subscribe. Help me get to 500. Ugh. So like I said, I think I have the, I think I've come up with the formula for creating a good life. So here's what I've been thinking lately. I've been thinking about how people, how parents raise their children. And I think if you were to ask people, a, a majority of people, what are you raising your child to be? I wonder if a majority of the parents, if honest, would say that they're raising their child to be 18. I don't know how much thought is put into the the zero to 18. And what are you raising them to be at that day, at that birthday? What do you expect from them? So I've been thinking about what is kind of the point of life. Most people might say that the point of life is to be happy, but that's very hedonistic. And happiness only comes when there is a, a slight pressure that you burst through. You win, you win. And then you can be happy for a while. And then there's a light pressure or a big pressure and you handle it and then you win. So what would be, I was wondering, outside of the scope of happiness that truly everyone needs, what everyone would be pleased to have. And I've come up with one word, be ready, is fulfillment. Now, just hold on here. I have a formula that can be placed onto any aspect of one's life. If you disagree, let me know in the comments and tell me what I'm missing or what I need to add to it. So here's the formula. First, one must have an abundance of something, of anything. Once you have an abundance, and I'll I'll show you how this applies. Once you have an abundance of something, then you have something to share. We're tribal humans and most people like to contribute in some way. So then you have something to share. And then you have to find a very important, a worthy community to share it with. And then you become fulfilled in that arena. Let's think about it. Let's think about something simple, but not simple at all. Love. There are some people that are so fucked up and not maybe um, irreversibly so, but at points in one's life, people are so down that they have nothing to give. They're so empty and they're just like sucking and needing so much that they don't have anything to give. So one has to accumulate an abundance of many things. And we can do a video about this later, but I would say self-love, self-respect, self-esteem, self uh, efficiency, you know, an ability to live on one's own and to take care of oneself. You have enough of that. Then you have something to share to who? Well, the 4th of July thing would say first come, first serve to anyone who wants you, but that's not really right, is it? No, we're looking for, we're looking to give to a worthy audience, a worthy human. And that's different for all of us. But once we have that abundance and something to share, then we find the person that's worthy of our love. And then it goes up and you have fulfillment and love. There's a lot more that goes into it, but... I'm sure you're with me right now. Let's say that you are very good or have a uh, a love, a lust for music. So you decide on the piano and you spend a bunch of time building an abundance of knowledge on how to play that music. Then you have something to share to a worthy audience and then you are fulfilled in that. It goes like this. So I was talking about love. I was talking about piano. The bottom line of that, I think for parents and for right now, anyone that's watching this is to understand your ability or your inclination towards something. Now, if you're 40 years old, it's different than if you have an eight-year-old that you can teach this to, but I think anyone can learn it. Understand your ability and then work hard to cultivate it. And that's why I said the piano. You can have uh, an inclination for it, but if you're not working hard to hone it, then you won't attain much. Once you have this abundance, then you have something to take responsibility for. You have a responsibility for your practice, for growing more, for, for to participate in the piano experience. At that, at that time, at 18, hopefully you've taught your child the formula enough so when they go out into the world, they can 
appreciate and use the gift of freedom that we have here in the United States. As my, okay, we can we can argue about how little freedom we have, but we still have a lot. So with that, when you can teach your child the formula, then when they're 18 and they start to become, or hopefully at that time, they are responsible for their own education, they can, they can use this. Find out what you're interested in. Cultivate it. Take responsibility for it. And this can be done. This can be considered for anything. I said love, piano, let's say it's philosophy, battle rapping, a lust to cultivate an understanding of the human mind. Then you hone it, hone it, hone it. You can become a surgeon. You have an abundance. But we have to we have to think about the worthy community. The thing with this model is it can always be applied and growing. So I have a friend who's a battle rapper, and I laid this on him. Now, when he started, he was uh, just moved to Colorado, and he didn't have any money for rent. And he saw an ad or something for that they were doing battle raps. So he decided that he, because he was good at philosophy, he was good at poetry, he wrote up some battle raps, and he won. But it was like some Joe Schmo club in like Colorado Springs or Denver. The prize was still six hundred dollars, but he started to get self esteem from it. So the next time he put in more effort, he knew a little bit more about the trade because he was taking responsibility for learning it. He honed more, but the only thing that changes is the worthy community, the the worthy audience. What was worthy to him in the beginning, it was just like getting your foot in the door. Later on, the worthy audience the worthy community becomes more esteemed or paying more money or whatever the evidence is of that word worthy means. So I said this to him and he's like, no, I think that's wrong because I don't actually get that much fulfillment out of it now. I said, well, then why are you doing it? He said money. I said, well, okay, that's still a form of fulfillment, but he's just applying it now to the strictly money. Whereas before it was kind of like, whoa, this is an art that I have. This is a gift that I have. So now he's applied it. The formula still stands with fulfillment for money. But even so, I said, why are you doing it? Money. Okay, fine. And he said, yeah, plus I'm trying to like, I'm trying to wrap bigger names. I said, why? If if you're not getting fulfillment from it, he's like, well, it just makes me feel better to win against people who are more nationally known. Dude, that's my model. You're just applying it and you're growing. So now he needs a worthy community to, to showcase his gifts to. They're just higher. They're paying more money. They're They're a little bit more in tune and in touch and appreciative of what a good battle rep is. Okay. So this is why I think my system is amazing and applicable to all things in life. And I, th- I just, I feel bad for a lot of the kids out there. The education system has gotten totally out of hand. You know, it's within the past 100 years or so that it has become the norm to go to school. And we've totally forgotten, of course we have, we weren't alive, that the responsibility of learning something was usually the community, the worthy community around you and your parents or an apprentice. So we just give so much of our power as parents and as friends to the world that's not participating at all in education or or helping you create an abundance. The problem, when you don't have this model, when you're not taught it, this is what I think happens. When you don't know how to cultivate or find any source of abundance, that's that doesn't produce high self-esteem. I would say on the on the opposite, it produces low self-esteem. From low self-esteem, you typically you typically make bad decisions. Not always, but often. If you're in the pits, you'll typically make pitful <laughs> decisions. Have you ever met someone who has very low self-esteem, who makes bad decisions, who isn't prone to blaming? I met a guy at the dog park and he was in loss prevention. I don't know where he worked, but he was in it for years and years. And he said that whenever he would bust someone, he would have to wait up to four hours for the police to come. So he'd be stuck in a room with the thief for a long time. And he'd always get in conversations about like, hey, yo, what's going on in your life? And he said it was like following a script. Most everyone was like, oh, you know, like my girlfriend just broke up with me. My dad was a piece of shit. My mom wasn't around. Blame, 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 blame from 10 years ago, 20 years ago, last week. Not a lot of people that have low self-esteem will not take... Most of the people who have low self-esteem that make bad decisions because of it gear towards blame. It's not good. You're not teaching them how to be free, how to use the abundance that they can cultivate. What do you think of my model? I just want your input. Does it make any sense at all? It does a little. Come on. Can you add to it with me? 
can you take something away? Can you help me? Okay. Um, like I said, I have a 492 subscribers. I would like 500. If this interests you at all, then subscribe. That would be wonderful. Then we can hang out more whenever you want because you're in control of your life. Have a good day.